Hello, my absolutely beautiful Leo friends, and welcome to your horoscope for February of 2022. And just to clear things up right out of the gate, I am a Western tropical astrologer, and you can listen to this video for your sun, moon, or rising sign, whichever you'd like. I would prefer that you listen to it for your sun energy as I use a solar chart to cast these, but my beautiful friend, do you listen for what resonates with you, okay? All right, beautiful Leo friends. First of all, hopefully you've had the opportunity to kick in to the Kickstarter, which allows us to have community funded, but ultimately some free astrology education on this channel. I bring master teachers from around the world. This next year, we will continue on adding Vedic. We'll move into progressions and continue to bring the technical skills of how you practice astrology to life right here on the YouTube channel. So click in the description box down below. Join Join us to kick into the Kickstarter. All right, Leo, this month is really interesting. There is a nice relationship balance that is happening for you because we've got a new moon happening in Aquarius in that seventh house space, and we've got a full moon happening in your sign in Leo. So there's definitely the me and the we balancing factor for you that is lit up. Not to mention, if you look at the chart, you can see that the Western hemisphere, so the right side of the chart, is predominantly busy for you this month, which also gives the indicator that we're going to be doing a lot of focus on relationships this month. So let's get in here and see what's coming up for us. Right at the beginning of the month on the first, we've got that full moon happening at 12 degrees of Aquarius. This is going to light up your seventh house space. The new moon is about planting your seeds of intention to either begin something new or give something a fresh start. You don't have to start it from scratch. What just needs a new vibration, some new life, some new light, some new energy in your relationship? What these are conscious, chosen one on one relationships. So you know these people in your life. Is it a business partnership? Is it a romantic partnership? Are you getting divorced and you would like that to be amicable? You know, and that would be in the space of open enemies. You know, you have conflict with somebody. So, what is it in the seventh house? Now, I will tell you because this moon is in alignment with Saturn, also squaring Uranus. What that gives to the flavor of this moon is this understanding that you can have what you would like in your relationships, but you are going to work for it, right? Saturn is an energy that can be heavier. So it's this, it's not going to just come to me kind of energy. Instead, I'm going to have to put effort into it. And it's really furthermore for me an energy that speaks to, I can't wait for circumstances to change. I have to change and adapt and do the work for the results that I want is very much so what this moon speaks to, but it is a blast of beautifully progressive energy in Aquarius to get these relationships where you'd want them. Do you want to be in a relationship, right? Would you like to have a business partner? This is a wonderful new moon to plant your seeds of intention. Now, as we get to the third, Mercury's coming out of retrograde. Thank you very much. We can get on with it, right? As Mercury comes out of retrograde it'll be here at 24 degrees of capricorn and if you remember back december 29th 2021 is where we started the mercury retrograde pre shadow time that's when mercury started to slow down and prepare and bring lessons to our attention at 24 degrees of Capricorn of what we were going to need to look at and work on as Mercury began to take its retrograde cycle. So today you can sign those contracts, move forward, make those deals, know that your mind is a little bit sharper and more on the game. And honestly, you may feel a little energetic release. Now, I think you'll feel a stronger energetic release and you'll be in an even better position to make decisions after February 24th when Mercury fully leaves its retrograde cycle, okay? It's going to come out of post-retrograde shadow time at 10 degrees of Aquarius, which means from that point on, Mercury is officially moving forward. From now, from the 3rd to the 24th, Mercury is just moving back into a path that it was already moving on before, so everything's not fully forward just yet. So keep that in mind, but it doesn't mean that you have to hold back on so many decisions. As we get to the 14th, Mercury is going to pick up that little bit of speed and move forward into the energy of Aquarius. So shoot back to me January 2nd, 
what was happening in your life between January 2nd and January 14th in terms of communications you were having around relationships. Where was this place where you're like, I need to know this. I need answers to these questions. I, I want to progress in this area. It almost felt like you needed to be full of knowledge or information. What information came to you that was kind of surprising? It maybe came out of nowhere and it could have been that you were connecting with someone from the past or a project from that past kind of came back to your table. But between January 2nd and January 14th, when we got to see the height of Mercury moving forward before it retrograded in Aquarius, that's what this Mercury back in Aquarius energy is going to bring back to the table for you to review and make some forward-minded decisions. On the 16th, we've got a full moon happening in your sign, in your first house, the house of the self, the physical body, your external space, how you regard yourself, your personality, how you are honestly showing up in the world. You've got a full moon that's saying, Leo, you need to be ending something acknowledging something or making an adjustment. Now, Mercury and Pluto have a nice emphasis at this particular moon. So really what I think this moon is about, or it offers a window of light for you to engage, Leo, is about speaking up for you. What do you need to say? What have you been holding back that it's like, no, this is who I am. No, this is how I want to do this. And even if it's not this, you know, go get them attitude do it leo's way because remember you're still in high relationship zone here in that western energy but you maybe haven't been using your voice in a way that is as beneficial in your relationships that you may need to so i think this is very much a time where you're called to take a risk and come out to the surface a little bit more on the 17th, we're going to see Jupiter and Uranus come into a sextile with one another. And I like this energy because, first of all, we've got Jupiter traveling over here in your 8th house space with Neptune. The sun's getting ready to come in there. And then Uranus over in Taurus in your 10th house space. Okay, so we've got an 8th house, 10th house sextile. Why I love this is because it's exciting. It's not only a pocket of opportunity that is available, but you're intelligently in a sextile, you're intelligently taking action to get it done. So what have you felt like, oh my gosh, I've just been trying to make this connection, get this thing done in my career, make a decision over here, connect with my partner. You know, what do you feel like you've been stuck trying to get done and now you get this like blast of energy to get it done? Or what have you been anticipating? Is like coming your way. You're like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait. This is coming around the corner for me, right? Have you been waiting for something to be delivered to you? This is a great day where you take a risk, you invest, and you go forward with whatever that little thing that is bringing you excitement and risk and anticipation is. It's a really nice day to take advantage of the opportunity. On the 18th, then we'll have the sun dip into that energy, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality into your eighth house. I love the eighth house for, first of all, looking at intimacy you see into me this is a deep portion of you right some other source connected to you is playing a deep intimate part in your relationship with them now it can be taxes insurance it can be death it can be therapy it can be astrology it can be any of those things it can be flat out sex you could be having some sex right or things around sex or sexual topics sexuality root chakra work any of these things can be coming up at this time but i also think leo at this point in the year right we have got the sun in Pisces, we just had it in Aquarius. So that means that when the sun got into Aquarius, it became your personal winter, your personal cleanup time. Whenever the sun is opposite where our sun sign is at, we come into our own personal like cleanup time. So in the eighth house with the sun here, what do you need to detox? right? Like, do you need to detox? Have you been eating crappy? Have you been eating things that are just not in alignment with you? Have you been moving and shaking your body? Do you need to detox fear from your life? What is it that's also available under this Piscean energy that could be your own undoing or by detoxing, it can be your own growth and assimilation? As we close out the month on the 24th, we're going to see Mercury leaving that pre-retrograde shadow time, 10 degrees of Aquarius, ready to roll, moving forward, make those decisions, sign those contracts, go on that date, even if it is a virtual coffee date, do you, but you have that forward motion of 
Mercury being out of retrograde, Venus being out of retrograde to move forward. Not to mention Venus and Mars are traveling together with each other this month in a really lovely combination. So you have a blast of energy that is really about wetting the appetite for something that you're passionate and that you do desire exploring. So while it is still a slow moving month, it is busy and we're going to pick up speed as we move towards March. So enjoy this month. Please let me know what's happening for you. How are these things manifesting? Definitely let me know what happens for you around the 17th, 18th with that sextile. I would love to know what you're going to invest your energies into, okay? Don't forget to give to the Kickstarter. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton and I'll see you next month. Bye, Leo.